Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, welcome to another broadcast of Perfecting Our Relationship with our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope everyone is having a blessed week. Um, I'm very excited today as uh, about what God is going to share with us and how God is going to impart his nuggets to our, into our spirit so that we could continue to grow and be nourished and, de- and nourished and developed in him so that we can be that witness that he has called us to be. So before we get started into our lesson for today, I want to open up in prayer. Uh, Father, I just come before you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, thanking you for this day, oh God, thanking you for the opportunity to just come before your people and to share your heart with people. Uh, Father, I thank you, Lord, that this word should not fall on It shall fall on good ground, and it shall produce fruit after its own kind. And we should go forth to be the women and the men that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, welcome, everyone, once again to a wonderful broadcast of Perfecting Our Relationship with Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us about not being entangled in the cares of this world. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to us about under being able to understand the difference between being attacked by the devil and being captured. Because let me tell you, friend, we are dealing with a real enemy. He's real. Even though he may be invisible, he's real. And he is deceptive and he's cunning and he's always scheming to destroy us or to pull us away from God. And although he may be invisible, and that is his, and and he's hoping because he's invisible, and let me tell you, his name is the devil. He's hoping because he is invisible, we will ignore the fact that he's not there. And we will adopt or adapt or allow him to capture or um, bring us into captivity to ideas and thoughts and ways that we think are our own, but it's nothing but a trick of the devil. He's very good at disguising himself into um, the uh, uh, life situations or life circumstances or the problems on our job, which I had to deal with this week, or people or financial situations or infirmities. And we're not looking at the spiritual aspect that is behind that. And I want to encourage us, I want to tell all of us, what we see, the things that we see that's visible, that we're dealing with, we need to, we have to, God want us to understand and look beyond the visible aspect of it and know that we are dealing with the much powerful source that's invisible. So he's going to teach us today how to recognize that and so that we can begin to use the spiritual will, uh, weapons that he has provided us with. And with that, today our lesson, today the title of our lesson is Don't Get Captured. Don't Get Captured. And as I said in the beginning, the enemy, he probably know Jesus told us, Jesus told us in John 10, 10, that he has come to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. But the thief and the thief is no other but that, but that deceiving cunning devil. He has come to kill, no, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And although many of us may not have been physically um, destroyed or killed by the devil, I would like to ask this question today. What have he stolen from you? What have he stolen from you? Have he stolen your joy? Have he stolen your peace? Have he stolen your finances? Have he stolen your family? Have he stolen your health? Have he stolen your, uh, your assignment, your purpose? I'm willing to say for all of us, if we take inventory of where we are today, we probably can identify some areas in our life where the enemy has crept in and has stolen something from us. And we have not realized. We have just adapted to it and allow it to hold us into captivity or perhaps become a stronghold in our life and looked at and, and, and is looking at and dealing with it or managing it as, oh, that's just life. But no, it is not. So we're going to talk today about don't be captured. And it's okay. We know that the enemy, he's a, he attack us. And I just want to say we need to understand the difference between attack and being captured. And we're going to go through scripture today. And we're going to go through the word of God 
so that God can um, illuminate that unto us so we can see that difference between attacked and being captured. Because as long as we are walking this earth, as long as we are believers in Christ, we are going to be attacked by the enemy because that's his main purpose. That is his ultimate purpose for each and every one of us that's serving the Lord. He may know that he cannot destroy us. He may know that he cannot uh, uh, kill us, but he's going to spend the rest of our time on this earth, doing everything that he possibly can to discourage us to, and to distract us. And that is to lure us away from fulfilling our purpose in the Lord. That is to pull us away from allowing God to be glorified in our life. So being attacked is not okay, but God wants us to learn how to fight those attacks. God attacks. He wants us to know how to recognize them and how to seek his face so that he can deliver us from those attacks, so that those attacks would not become strongholds, so that those attacks would not become, um, or they would not begin to imprison us or hold us captivity. So we're going to look at two words today before we begin, and we're going to define them. The attack, we're going to look at what the definition is of attack. And what's the definition is, what the definition is of captured. The first one, captured. And I want us to, as we go on through the lesson today, keep in mind these two def definitions. So as you think back on your life, look at your life and say, eh, have I been captured? Have I allowed the enemy to hold me captivity? Have I, have I allowed him to imprison or to enslave me in any areas of my life because God, God wants us to be free. Jesus came and he set us all free when he died on that cross and he rose and went and ascended up to sit at the right hand of the father. He freed us from the, from the schemes, from the deceptions of the devil. And he, his desire and his passion is for us to remain and to walk in that freedom in every area of our life every day. So let's look at these two definitions. Captured. Taken to one's possession by control or force to grab or trap something that does not want to that does not want to be grabbed or taken. And is that not is that not what the devil does to us? He he forces his thoughts, um, uh, his his ideas and his ways and his philosophies upon us. And then have us thinking that that's our way of thinking, or that's us, or that's just how it is. No, it is not. And this part I really love about uh, with the definition of captured. When you are out to capture someone or something, you strategically set a trap for them. You strategically set a trap for them. And that's what Paul alludes to in the book of Ephesians. And that's why he warns us to be mindful and to make sure that we put on the entire armor of God so that we can, so that we can combat, so that we can counteract his schemes. And that's what a scheme is. A scheme is when you strategically plot against someone. When you strategic, when your when your plan or your plot to destroy them, you are strategic with it, and that's what that's what the devil does. He is sitting back, looking at each and every one of us, watching us, looking and seeing what our weaknesses are, looking and seeing what can easily distract us, so that he can so that he can strategically put a plan, or I'm not, I'm not going to say a plan because he does not plan a plot in place to cause us to be defeated in our walk in the Lord. So keep that in mind. The next attack. Attack is when is when you come upon someone or when someone come upon you in a violent, forceful, aggressive, and hostility manner to do you harm or to hurt you. And yes, that is what the devil does. He attack he attack us and his intent is to hurt us. His intent is to destroy us. His intent is to harm us. But many times he may not totally destroy us, but he said, I will, I will cause you to be discouraged. I will cause you to be um, uh, delusional. The attack of discouragement is nothing but attack. The, the attack of insecurities, the attack of infirmities, those are attacks. But that does not mean that you have to allow those attacks to capture you, 
to capture you and hold you into captivity. So once again, I want to go back to our lesson. Don't be captured. Don't be afraid of the attacks because God has given each and every one of us the weapon, the uh, Our weapons are not carnal, but they are powerful through the mighty uh, uh, pulling down the strongholds, pulling down strongholds. God provided us with mighty weapons. And that's why Paul in Ephesians, he he cautions us to be sure that we put on the entire armor of God because we can fight against these attacks. And we get ready to go into scripture now. And we're going to see two examples where God, where he show us where the servant of God is number one, being attacked. And then how the servant of God don't don't bring those um, attacks into captivity or those distractions and how he is, how he gets lured and then brought into captivity. So we're going to start our lesson today in the book of Judges and we're going to start with, um, we're going to be in chapter 15 and most of us know the story. We probably heard it in Sunday school several times. The story of Samson and Deliah. And we probably heard when we heard the story, we probably said as I said, Oh, that's a real interesting story. That's an intriguing story. But God has a, a spiritual principle in this event that He wants us to take away so that we will understand not to be captured. And for those of us who may not remember Samson, or though for those of us who may not know Samson, Samson was a biblical hero. He was a judge. I mean, he was a judge. He was a judge of Israel. He judged Israel for 20 years. He was a judge that God gave unusual strength to, which was in his hair. And that's, a, that's even another uh, sermon, which we'll get to sometime later. Um, God, he had unusual strength. He was a Nazarite, meaning that he could not drink wine. Uh, meaning that a razor could not touch his hair, his hair could not be shaved, and he could not touch dead carcasses or bodies. Same as, as, as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who also was a Nazarite. Samson had many weaknesses. He had many distractions. Um, he was gifted, as I said earlier, he was gifted by God with unusual strength. And unfortunately, Samson did not always use his gifts to the glory of God. He did many times, most of the time, he did not use his gifts to, um, for the purpose of the purpose that God had gave him his gift, his, the gift for. He was unwise in using his gift. And I'm sure if many of us would look back at ourselves, we can say we too have probably not used the gifts and the talents that God has given us in a wise manner. And one of the biggest distractions that Samson had was that Samson was lustful, and he had a desire for ungodly women. In this case, the Philistines. Samson loved Philistine women, and these were women that were the enemies of God and the enemies of the children of Israel. Samson always looked for women outside of the of the um, nation of Israel, and that's one of the reasons why in the word of God he tells us do not be unequally yoked because many times, not all the time, but many times when we get yoked with someone that is not of the same faith as we are, they can have the tendency to lure us from the purpose and the assignment that God has called us to. Samson was set aside at birth. He was set aside by God. He was to be used by God to destroy God's enemy. And in this particular uh, chapter, or in this particular, during this particular time, it was the Philistines. Samson, as I said earlier, he had a lust and a sensual desire for ungodly women. And that is, that is what caused him to be captured, is his desire for ungodly women. And as we know from time, as we know from the story, that woman was Deliah. Uh, we're going to start, as I said, with in verse 15. Yes, verse 15, and we're going to go over to verse 14. And we're going to start, we're going to pick up and start reading at verse 14. And when he came unto Le Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that and the cords that were up on his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. I'm on verse sixteen. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass. 
Heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, the cast away the jawbone, that cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Rama Lehi. This particular example, or this particular passage of scripture is a scripture where Samson was attacked, but he was able to escape the attack. He destroyed over a thousand of the Philistines, his enemies. In several chapters before this, Samson was attacked. If you read the book, and I do encourage you to read the story of Samson because you will see up until this point, he was attacked many times, many times, but he was able to destroy the enemy. And I just want to encourage, that's why I said I want to encourage all of us. The enemy is going to attack us. And that, because that is his ultimate purpose, is to try to lure us and pull us away from the Lord. His purpose is to discourage us. His purpose is to uh, distract us so that we would not become the men and women that God has called us to be. But we don't have to, we do not have to allow those attacks to entangle us or to imprison us. And that's why I wanted to show you this in scripture, how Samson was attacked. And please go and read the uh, other scriptures, but he was able to destroy the enemy. He was able to get away. Now I want to go over to uh, chapter 17. I want to go over to chapter, sorry, chapter 16. And in between what we just saw in chapter 14 to where we get ready to pick up at to chapter 16, Samson meets Deliah. Well, as we said, as I said earlier, Samson had a weakness for ungodly women. Samson, but this particular woman, Delilah, he 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 lust after her. And the Bible tells us that we are drawn uh, in the book of James that we are drawn away because of our own lustful desires, because of our own lustful uh, and fleshly and sinful desires. That's how the enemy is able to capture us because of our own desires. And this and this is what happened to Samson. The enemy watched him. He strategically planned and put this beautiful woman in his path. And Samson was lured away from the purpose and his assignment because he lust after this woman. Deliah was um, paid by the, Philist- by the Philistines a handsome amount of money to find out what Samson's secret was, what was the secret of his strength, and which is very interesting, which tells us that obviously Samson was a, Samson was a normal-looking man. So they wanted to know, why is this man so strong? Where is his strength? So they, so they, um, so they solicited Deliah because they knew Samson had this weakness. The enemy know what your weakness is, and he know he knows the right carrot to dangle in our face to get us to focus on that instead of focus on our assignment. And that is exactly what Samson did. So this is where we're getting ready to pick up at where the Philistines, they went to Deliah, they offered her a nice amount of money to find out um, the secret of Samson's strength. Samson, she asked him four times, which is really interesting. She asked him four times. And four times he lied to her, but I'm sorry, three times he lied to her. And the fourth time he asked her, Samson, you don't love me. You know how sometimes women can be very persuasive and use that on men. You must don't love me. That's why you're not telling me the truth, batting her eyes, etc. And then Samson gave in and he told her the truth that his, the strength of his um, secret was in his hair. And this is where we get ready to pick up at chapter. We're in chapter 16 and we're going to start with verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she called him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be up on thee, Samson. Now this part right here. Every time he told her the three, uh, the three previous times that he lied to her and told her that his strength was in that particular situation, uh, 
and she and he fit and and she called the Philistine the Philistines to come and capture him and when they came he was able to defeat them because and she would say Samson the Philistines are upon you and then he would get up and he would destroy them because his strength had not left him because he did not reveal the true source of where his strength was until this fourth time and so when he did when, when she did it this fourth time he got up as he normally do, thinking that he was going to defeat the Philistines. But as we get ready to see, that did not happen. In verse, in verse, um, where are we at? Okay, verse 20. And she said, the Philistines be up on thee, Samson. And he spoke out, and he spoke out, and he winced not that the Lord, and oh, I'm sorry, let me slow down here. I will go out at other times before and shake myself. And he winced not that the Lord was departed from him. So he's thinking, let me get up. I could go out like I did in time past because the Lord is still with me and I will destroy them. But as we see, that was not the case. And this right here shows us, friends, that Samson's relationship with God had deteriorated so much that he did not even realize that the presence of the Lord was no longer with him. And I want to ask, I want to ask us that today. Have we gotten so distanced from God? Have our relationship de deteriorated so bad with the Lord? We don't spend time in his presence. We don't pray. We don't fast. We don't seek his face. We're not in fellowship with him. And we cannot even realize that his presence is no longer heavy within us. We, cannot, we, can, we don't even hear his voice anymore. We don't seek him for direction. We just go about doing whatever it is that we want to do. That's what Samson did. And he thought that the presence of the Lord was still with him. He didn't even realize it. And I want to go down here to verse, which is really interesting. I want us to gleam in on this and really um, let this be imprinted within our spirits. Verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house look at what happened to Samson a mighty warrior of God that was set apart for the use of God that had unusual strength to destroy the enemies of God that was fulfilling the purpose the assignment of God look how he ends up but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes I want to take note here the the uh, enemy blinds us physically before we, I'm sorry, spiritually before many of us may ever, we may never, we may never be blinded physically as Samson was, but Samson was blinded first spiritually. And that happens to so many of us because we're not paying attention to the attacks of the devil. Paul tells us in second Corinthians chapter two, verses 11, be not ignorant of the enemy devices, least he'll get the advantage over us. We always have to be mindful. We all always have to be attentive to what is going on around us in our lives, in, in the atmosphere. Because Jesus warns us, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Who is the serpent? Satan. Satan is wise. He's cunning and he is definitely deceptive. And without the power of the Holy Spirit to open up our spiritual eyes and to let us see and know the ways that the enemy is coming in to attack us, we can easily become in prison and in bondage and be led in, 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 in different parts of our hearts or our minds can be um, in, in change and shackles like Samson. Samson was physically in chains, fetters. He was physically captured. But the enemy with us, I mean of us, it may not be physically. That's why I said in the beginning, we have to be spiritually awake. Because a lot of times what we're looking at in the visible realm is something far greater going on in the invisible realm. And that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to fight the, the physical realm, what we can see. 
because we would never pick up our spiritual weapons and fight him in the spirit. That's where we would destroy him. That's where we would pull down those strongholds. That's where we would be. De- that's where we would defeat him in the spirit realm, not with these um, physical, earthly weapons that we're taking out because we're thinking we're fighting something that's earthly because we can see it. No. But the Philistines took him and put it and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. And that's what the enemy does to us. When he get us to take our focus off of God, when he get when he lured these distractions before us, and I want to know that Deliah wasn't anything but a distraction for Samson. And I want to ask us today, what is our distraction that is pulling us away from fulfilling the purpose that God has set for us? What are our distractions? Because once the enemy was able to capture him, they put him in, they, they, they captured him, and then they were in control of the situation. And that's what happened to us. When Satan captured us, now he's in control of the situation. Now he's in control of of where we go, how we do things, how we speak, our thought process. That's why the title of this lesson is Don't Be Captured. Know how to seek the Lord when you're being attacked. Know how to identify it. Seek God and ask God, where's this attack coming from? And allow the Holy Spirit to show you what spiritual weapons you need to use to defeat the enemy in the spirit. Because what you're fighting, what you see, your financial situation, your illness, whatever you see in the natural, that's not what you're fighting. You're fighting something far greater that's invisible. And that's what the devil don't want you to see. Because he is very good at disguising his tactics and his scheme in in life crisis. So you can think that's what you need to be fighting. Don't get captured. But I like to say, I like to look at uh, verse 22. Habit, the hair of his head began to grow after he was shaven. And we know, obviously, um, Samson repented. God forgave him. And as for those of us who know the story, as we continue to read on, Samson destroyed more Philistines at his death than he did when he was living. So that let us know that God's purpose was still performed because God is always good. His purpose is going to be done regardless of how it has to get done. His purpose is going to be fulfilled. So Samson, at the end of his life, he fulfilled his purpose. And this was the beginning of God raising up leaders, raising up judges and kings as we when we go over to our David in David's time, kings to destroy the enemy. Well, friend, that's all the time, friends, that's all the time that we have today. And I pray that God was able to minister to you. I pray that God was able to show you the difference between the attack because attacks you can get out of. Just don't let those attacks bring you into captivity. I want to uh, pray us out. I want to pray for those of us who do not know Jesus Christ as our Lord. The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you shall be saved. If you want to be saved today, just repeat this quick prayer after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, acknowledging that you died for my sins. I, 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 accept, I accept your completed work on Calvary. I open up my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are our Lord, and that you are the only one that can forgive me of all my sins, past, present, and future. I ask you to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you. Amen. If you said that prayer and you mean that prayer, you are now a part of the family of God, and I want to welcome you, and I want to encourage you. Don't be captured. And don't be afraid of the attacks because God can deliver you from them. In Jesus' name. Have a blessed week, everyone. I love you all. I look forward to speaking back with you again in another two weeks. Amen. Thank you.